All right, so we're in the shop, all right. I've been suffering from a back ailment here for days, all right. And today is the first day in a minute that my belt, or my back, not my belt, my back has felt okay. Uh, so uh, I've been working on the Dauntless. Uh, Y'all saw that reel, some of you did, that I posted of the, of the old gears packed in Vaseline. I actually uh, had my camera, but I thought I'd forgotten it, and it was in the truck. So <clears throat> I did all that crap and didn't realize I actually had the camera. That is together. It's been checked uh, repeatedly with uh, feeler gauges and everything like that. It appears to be correct. Um, if it is not, then we'll address it after the fact. You know, we're going to verify the oil pressure is what it's supposed to. It turns like it's supposed to. Um, it appears to be fine. Um, I'll show you a little bit more of that in a second. Um, actually, the night that I that I filmed that where I was putting the gears in with the uh, Vaseline, I went ahead and put the cover on, like I said in that video, and I found out something nifty. So you remember that stud that I was talking about that was uh, extremely difficult to get out? <clears throat> well... Apparently, even though I'd already threaded a bolt back into it repeatedly, I didn't look at it close enough. So I went ahead and put the cover all the way on, was all the bolts on, everything's ready, gaskets on, Permatex is on, everything's perfect, it's on there, it's grand, it's great. And then uh, that hole doesn't have any threads in it. So I uh, ended up having to get another gasket because that one ripped to pieces, uh, taking it off. So... We're gonna. I got. Uh, I went ahead and tapped it. I couldn't tap it the way I wanted to because the the hole was bad enough to where um, it wouldn't. You couldn't just do like one size bigger than it was supposed to. So I went bigger than I care to, but it it should be all right. So we went to this size, which is a seven sixteenths. This bolt is a five sixteenths. So it's a, it's it's a good bit bigger, but it uh. I, would, I wouldn't dare go any bigger and because uh, you're cutting down on the ceiling surface for the water jacket. But I think it's fine. I've seen ceiling surfaces for water jackets thinner than this, so we should be fine with that. Uh, we're going to make sure that we seal it good. Gasket's on there, right? So we're going to do that right now, all right? And we're going to look at some other stuff. I'll show you what I did. But let's do that real quick, shall we? All right? And we got some more brack cleaner and... Uh, the gasket set. So, another one. So, let's go over here if we can. There's crap everywhere. The shop is a mess. That's part of the reason why I want this done in a timely manner. Uh, but it's not going to work out because i got to go out of town on Saturday. And so, this isn't going to be done. But what we want is tonight to get this timing cover on. And uh, tomorrow, hang on a second. Hang on. And tomorrow, get the oil pan on. That's what we would like. Uh, just that way, while I'm gone, I'll be gone for about two weeks. That way, while I'm gone, all this important stuff that like runs your engine and stuff isn't uh, sitting here exposed to the elements anymore. I've kept everything really, really, really oily to keep all this crap from getting, getting uh, crappy. So I got the oil gasket scraped off, but we're going to go ahead and, and buff it real quick with the Ziz wheel. And uh, that way it's all nice and clean for the new gasket. And we're going to check some other stuff while we got it apart again, just to, just to make sure. Um, just to make sure that everything's kosher. Let's see. Probably should bring some kind of light over here. That other one's too bright. So I got my Makita light over here somewhere. It'd be nice to get up all these tools and stuff so that we can actually uh, move in here again. That'd be handy. Um, well, there's the Ziz wheels. Let's see. Some kind of, oh, here it is. All right, so. Let's take a look here real quick. So, uh, this is the surface right here, all this. I chased all these holes. This is the one I had to 
had to tap and it is it's a lot bigger than it was originally but uh, I think it'll be fine uh, there's a little bit of play in the threads but so there is also on the original ones I'm hoping that'll be fine this isn't under extreme torque or anything so I think this should be all right um, at least that's what we're hoping. But what we do got to do is degrease this, this wheel it good, and all that good stuff. So I've got apparently water uh, from all this rain we're getting here has leaked into the floor and mixed with all the oil and gas and stuff. So that's all awesome. Put this light somewhere kind of pointing loosely in that. There we go. Let's just throw the gaskets on the ground. That's fine. Um, and we'll, we'll brush this off real quick. I'm probably going to pick up all these tools before I leave so that they don't go missing. Right. And you do this real lightly with these because these will cut metal. So you don't want to you don't want to get serious on it. You just want to clean it off, right? Nothing crazy. Nothing. You don't want to get carried away with it. And so you ain't gotta be perfect. Main thing is you want it degreased. Hence why we got more brake cleaner. And that. It also throws debris all over your timing chain and stuff, and we don't want that noise. We don't want none of that, so we're going to rinse the timing chain here. Get all this crap off of here. I'm not blowing oil and crap all over the camera, but uh There goes the compressor I'm trying to blow off any of that All right now this this is your cam right here, all right? And you gotta make sure that you put your old pump eccentric on there. This is your gear for your distributor. This is the weird little BS spring thing. Not entirely sure what it does, but it needs to go there. And this is your uh, old slinger. That's what they call it. But you gotta make sure you put that on, all right? This is torqued correctly. Um, made sure to torque it right everything here is correct i accidentally broke off this uh this is where the tensioner used to go so you don't need it on the double roller but the tensioner when i went to tighten it up just to make sure it didn't come out it broke off which is shouldn't be an issue because we don't need it anymore but uh and it's locked tight in there so that piece shouldn't come out and like destroy things so It, uh, it should be all right, theoretically. Now I didn't pep, I didn't prep the back of this like I planned on, but I wouldn't plan on going out of town on Saturday. I actually thought I was going to go sooner, and I didn't really get a chance to do uh, the prep work like I wanted to, um, or at least not all of it. So we'll just once this is all sealed up, we'll chip it off later and. and Shoot it one color. Now this is pretty pitted around this uh, surface here, which is the water jacket, which, you know, it's not critical at all. <laughs> it's just, you know, really, really important. But it, uh, 
I think it's still intact enough to seal. I'm worried about this bottom edge, but we're gonna we're gonna permatex the crap out of it. Um, really make sure that we get good surface contact. Now, before we put this together, uh, we're gonna double check stuff, right? So your chain's good, tension's good. We're not hitting nothing weird. Everything still rotates. Crank rotates fine. I've rotated a few times. This is torqued. Eccentric's there. That's there. Spring is there. Bullshit little plastic cap is there. Um, and uh, seal is already in the cover. Gears are already in place. Here's the, let me show you this real quick. Here's the timing, whoop, here's the timing cover assembled. Old gear are in there. Washers, or not washers, the um, booster plate is in there. Um, we got to clean this surface off because that's where the old gasket was on it. So we're going to scrape this off. Um, get this side prepped. And they still do turn. It's hard to turn by hand because it's got Vaseline on it, which is, you know, mildly slippery. But if you turn, you put a screwdriver in there. These, uh, I packed a lot in there, so it's still, it actually turns. I'm just not get the right screwdriver for this but it does it does turn both directions you don't want to turn it all the way but just a little bit so it's still moving so this should be good to go we're just going to scrape this surface so we're just going to take this razor blade here trying to try to scrape this surface a little bit get it prepped again I wanted to do it right the first time you know but I didn't it's my fault, I should have checked that hole better, which is, you know, you get in a hurry, you start doing stuff fast, and then you don't think about stuff, because I, I should have verified that hole. But like I said, I did thread a bolt back into it, and it threaded in, and it held. And then I took it out and threaded it back in. So why it decided to, uh, it must have just had just barely any threads left. And, uh, it's probably like debris in there and making me think that it was threading in when in fact it was a trick. It was a trap, like in Star Wars, you know, it's a trap, you know, it's like that. I posted that really long video, it's over an hour long today, which y'all seen of me pulling the engine out of Jubal. Um, that's probably where I hurt my back, was pulling on that engine. And like I said in that video, uh, I wrote it in the subtitles but I forgot to unhook the choke in the uh, the choke in the temperature gauge which is turns out you gotta unhook those and I'm like who would have known you know who knew that so I didn't realize that until after I'd already turned the camera off and uh, unhook those I bent the hell out of the choke on the carburetor I don't think I actually damaged the carburetor but I did bend the tab for the choke uh, but it's all right. As far as the metal in there, y'all were saying that that's, uh, you know, could be bearing and stuff. It could be, certainly could be. I don't know what it is. It, uh, the way that transmission looks, if I didn't know any better, I'd say that transmission was rebuilt. It looks so good on the inside. So I wonder if maybe they rebuilt the, uh, transfer case too, and they just never broke it in. <laughs> and it's got, it's got metal in it from that, you know, I don't know. Or it could just be that it's worn completely out and uh, it just has no external signs of it because it, it doesn't. It doesn't show any uh, grinding. There's no trouble shift. Every now and then it'll have trouble shifting, but that's not from it. That's these older transfer cases, they bind up sometimes, you know. Um, Either way, it's a good transmission and transfer case. I'm not worried about it. We're not actually going to use it on the two-wheel drive one because it's already got a transmission in it that we have no ideas in any kind of good condition or what's inside it. But uh, I guess we'll figure that out after we put the uh, L head to it and see if it moves. Um, it shifts. The shifting tower's not stuck. Trucks generally don't, uh, their transmissions don't go bad, as bad as like a regular Jeep because they're not exposed to water pouring down the... Uh, Shifting tower. So generally you can expect a truck transmission or a wagon transmission to be in, in pretty decent working condition as long as somebody was driving it that had a brain. 
but uh, get this surface all nice and clean again and redo this whole process while it rains which is the best time to work on a Willys truck as y'all know that's my favorite it's raining right now if y'all can hear it and that's the absolute best time to be messing around with your damned old Willis, all right? That's just the way it is. Well, I did have to drill out the hole on this cover just slightly. It actually was already oversized, which I was glad about, so I didn't have to drill it very much to get the new bolt to go through it. So I think we're good on that as far as the uh, hole goes on the timing cover for the new bolt. Yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with the quality of this timing cover. Um, I uh, one of the bolts for the for the oil pump tried to strip. It tried. It thought about it, but I didn't let it do it. So I was able to get that situation uh, straightened out. Let's take this as well and get just that. <laughs> So this is this is ready to go and it smells like Vaseline so it's good. All right this is all prepped so now we're going to take the uh, the gasket and what's nice is is the way this is made it's got tabs sticking out of the block so you can actually go ahead and permatex the gasket put it on and it holds it for you which is handy. Let me pick up the gasket that I throw on the ground. So that goes on like that. Those holes line up, that hole lines up. That hole's not blocked. You don't want to block any holes. Make sure your gasket fits properly. Like that. And then we're going to take the cover. And we're going to check it again because we're paranoid because we don't want to deal with this. We don't want to permatex it all and put it together just to find out it's wrong again. So we're not doing that. Not again. Right Clay Traveler learns. All right. This other thing is the hole in the gasket's not going to be the right size, so we actually have to drill that hole. Just wind it with the drill bit. It's raining aggressive again. All right, all right, check, check. I know this is going to be exciting, but this is the process. If you want to mess with an old Willys and put Dauntlesses in trucks they didn't come in, things are going to have to happen. That appears to be good. Now the water pump is going to have to be drilled out slightly as well. So let's grab the uh, this is the old water pump. We're going to take it, we're going to put it on, 
we're going to verify that stuff does what it's supposed to. Well, if we put it on right, Yeah, like that. All right. Now we get it. All right, that works. Yes. Will it work again? We're gonna make sure this all works before we get carried away with ourselves. It appears to take tension. I wouldn't do a whole lot on it. We'll take our gasket and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get serious with the permatex, alright. We don't wanna have to deal with this crap linking and all these spots that are bad on the on the block here around the water jack and stuff. This is gonna give us our best chance of it not leaking like a sieve, all right? <laughs> a lot of guys will tell you, just put it on dry as long as the surface is clean. Like that's, you know, that's all great. This engine's old, the surfaces aren't good anymore. You know, even the surface on the timing cover is new machined, yeah, but guess what? The surface on the block is not what it was in 67 when they made this, all right? so. You're not proving nothing. Dudes argue with me that all the time. So, if you don't want to use Permatex, don't. But it never hurts anything, as long as you don't go crazy with it on stuff that depth is important. put it on both sides right now since I'm already gonna have my hand filthy from it anyway so I might as well go ahead and do both you know what I'm saying like I say the stuff glued it to the block so good that it sat overnight when I came to take it back off it ripped the gasket in half trying to take it back off the block so but, you know it seals pretty good If you do it right, you use enough, you get both sides, and you don't even have to go back and do it again. So that's this side. Both sides are coated pretty good. So now we're going to take it, put it on. Like that. Push it up against the block good. That way it you know, the tabs hold it in place and the Permatex holds it in place. None of our holes are blocked, which is good. We're gonna put a little bit extra up here around this water jacket, because that area is weak on the on the block. So we're gonna, gonna put a little extra around that on both sides. Give a little bit extra sealing potential. We're gonna make sure we put a lot around this hole right here because it is reduced the amount that it's. So 
because we don't want it. We don't want it fighting us at all. All right, so that's good. Put your Permatex down. Grab your filthy rag and try to wipe your hands off a little bit. <laughs> And grab your cover. Well, let's do another final check here. Gasket, check. Cam, eccentric, bull slinger, check. Anything important laying on the ground that need to go in here? Not that I see. <clears throat> Should be good. All right. We're gonna take our bloody cover here and we're gonna stick it on for the 30th time. Come on. There we go. All right, cover's on. And we're gonna start putting these bolts. We're not gonna torque them down, and I am putting Loctite on them because I don't want them backing out. And this is the removable Loctite. The holes have been chased. So we're not putting, uh, we're, not, we're just putting a little smear on them because this cover was missing some bolts when I got it. So apparently they'd rattled out or somebody had lost them. So we don't want to deal with all that crap. We're just going to do them finger tight to start with. And, uh, get them all kind of snugged up before we start torquing anything. Let's have a look. Come on. Well, it goes on like it's supposed to. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our drill bit and we're gonna drill this hole right here. Cutting it thin on that wall. It's cutting it real thin. water pump sealant <sighs> not overly excited about this whole hole being bigger situation because that's I don't know if it'll seal or not the hole's not super grande on the edge there but it's on the inside so I think it'll be all right I think it'll, I think we can deal with it. I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna be okay. I know this isn't exciting. This is a, 
as I always tell y'all, this is the bloody process, okay? This is the process. How much time we get left on this chip card? 15 minutes. All right, we'll be done in 15 minutes. We'll have this assembled and flipped over. 15 minutes. That's how long we get. Let me go ahead and put this on. I'm going to turn the camera off. And uh, I'll be back with you momentarily. Sound good? Sound good. All right, so we're back. All right. I went away for longer than I intended, but it's for good reason. So, got everything on here. Got the new water pump installed right here. Um, and we got everything torqued to proper spec. All right. So, um, these for the water pump, including this one that hold the water pump on, that is, uh, I think it's six to eight pounds. So I did them all to eight, including that one. So these are all torqued. Uh, the timing cover is, uh, I think it's 25 to 33. I did it to 30. So these are all torqued, all these that hold the water, I mean, hold the timing cover on. So this whole assembly is attached and torqued to a proper rating. Um, we're not going to worry about a fan blade because we can't actually run a fan blade uh, with the Dauntless um, because it's going to be too far from the radiator, so we're not even worried about that right now. Um, the only thing left I want to do here is I'd like to go ahead and, and uh, I'm probably not going to tighten it, but I want to put the harmonic balancer back on. Um, I'm sorry, this video is scattered, but I'm trying, it's raining. I'm trying to get this crap done before I leave, so forgive me. I love you, all right? Um, oh, so the other day, that reminds me, the other day I was in here, I bent over to pick something up like that, and this stool shot out from under me like a rocket propelled grenade, all right? And I busted my ass in here, and it did not do my back any good, all right? So be careful out there, all right? So we're going to take our balancer here and clean up this surface here. some junk down in it i feel good that this is on there now and that bolt worried me i'm hoping it'll seal i'm hoping hoping hope with me all right Trying to put this on without tearing the uh, seal all to hell, which is not going to be as easy as I'd like. Let me go wire wheel this end off so that we have a better chance of not destroying that seal because it is, it's a little, it's a little uh, crampy out here on the end. So we want this to go on smoothly, all right? So I didn't wear a wheel the actual surface that the seal rides on, um, just this end right here because it had like oil and crap caked on it. So I'm running out of video card. I got to give me some more video cards because if I don't delete the stuff, then, uh, you know, if I haven't downloaded the videos yet, then and I can't uh, get rid of it. Film more content for y'all. All right. All right. This should be uh, good to go. All right, so. Um, actually, we're gonna put a little bit of oil on this just to make it go in easier. So we don't want to rip, we don't want to rip that seal because then we have to order another one because this is a special seal, unlike the factory one.
that is fully seated. Harmonic balancer is on there. And uh, where's the bolt? Here it is. Here's the bolt for it right here. We're gonna clean it off. This has got to be torqued to, I think, 140 pounds. Which I don't know if I'll be able to do by myself without somebody holding the uh, back of the engine back there at the other end. We can go ahead and put it in there. like that um, let me see if I can't jam up the uh, crank in the back and then we got eight minutes worth of film left so let me jam that up real quick and see if I can't torque this all right so we got the torque wrench set up this is 140 at least minimum so we're gonna see if we can't do it to 150 for the crank bolt for the harmonic balancer but we got to jam the uh, back of it here to keep the crank from turning with something all right, so we got the crank jammed right now. I put a, one of the uh, flywheel bolts in, and then I put a wrench on it where it's, it's jammed, but it's not turning the uh, bolt anymore. So we're gonna see if we can't get this sucker torqued down to what it's supposed to be. I'm gonna keep an eye on this, make sure we don't do nothing weird here. Talk about tighter than Dick's hat band. There we go. That's 150. Do a little check here. Yep, all right, cool. All right. Now we're gonna unjam the crank. There we go. That worked out pretty good. There we go. And we didn't damage anything. Crank's not broke. Nothing's broke. Bolt didn't bend. I threaded it in as far as I could before it hit the block back here on the end of the crank where your ring gear goes. And then just lean the wrench over box end on the end of the, of the nut with it, uh, jammed against the uh, engine stand, which held it adequately, actually. That wasn't near as much of a hassle as I thought it was gonna be. Sweetness, all right. So that means the front of our engine is assembled, and as long as it doesn't leak like a damn sieve, then uh, we're good. Always remember to relax your uh, torque wrenches. Don't leave them bound up at 150 foot-pounds. That ain't good for them. All right, ain't good. This will probably be a shorter video once I edit it down. There's no reason to show you all this. I'm, like, I'm just putting this together. But uh, I just want to get you all some content. I'm going out of town, like I say, on Saturday. So I'm going to make sure to film another one. I won't be back for probably two weeks. And then when I get back, then uh, will be the final touches, and hopefully this engine will be in Jubal soon. Very soon. Let's see how much time we got left. Three minutes. Three minutes worth. What can we get done in three minutes? We can rotate this bloody engine back over. I know we can do that. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. There goes a wrench. All right. Bam. Engine's flipped. Now we can get back to 
checking around with this. So the rear main seal's changed. We got a new seal in the front for the front of the crank. New timing chain. All this good stuff. It's coming together. It's taking longer than I anticipated, but that just means it's gonna be oh so much sweeter. I love you all. I am the Red Clay Traveler. And uh, you know, if you notice, I, uh, I'm not a mechanic, all right? So if I can do it, you can do it. I don't have a fancy lift. I'm doing all this crap with hand tools and normal stuff, all right? So it ain't nothing fancy around here. I know a lot of channels and nothing against those guys. If, they, if I had the money, I'd have lifts and all kinds of fancy stuff in here. I don't, so I'm doing it the way I've always done it, the way everybody I know always did it. So you gotta fight, struggle, but you can do it. You gotta be patient and it will come together. It will surely pass. And this engine will be in Jubal soon, very soon. Before you know it, it will be in Jubal, all right? Hopefully in the next, uh, if I'm gone for two weeks, hopefully by the time I get back, let's say a week, it should be in there. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm hoping for. But like I say, uh, I know I've got to order the motor mounts. We got to put in the freeze plugs. We got to clean it up a little bit, degrease it, paint it, all that kind of stuff. But really, we're in the home stretch here. We are. So, um, and that will be the next part of this video series, right? Is the uh, install. Because that's really more the important stuff on what to show. Um, I'm going to try to show that to the best of my ability. I don't know how well I'm going to be able to show it, but I'm going to try. So, uh, yeah. The only thing left to do, by the way, so that I don't forget, and if y'all have already noticed, I've got to put in the spring assembly into the oil pump right here. I've got to put that in. I just, uh, you don't have to put that in right this second, so I've got to put that in. Um, but, yeah. So... I love you all. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Keep hitting that notification bell. Keep smashing the subscribe button. It's always good. Tell your friends, all right? It helps me get to a wider audience, more people to watch the videos, more people to enjoy the Willie's lifestyle, see my stupid face. Remember, Red Clay Traveler loves you. Dauntless Willie's power. Dauntless Willie's combined, all right? For greatness. For Greatness, all right? Greatness. That's what's going to happen, all right? I've even found a six set of tires that I'm probably going to put on Jubal for when my like, you know, when I'm just lighting the tires all the time and then, you know, keep this set to run on it. It's lots of good stuff coming, all right? Dauntless for life. Willie's for life. Don't you ever forget it. Get it. Yeah, buddy.